consider the area problem, find the area bounded by f of x equal to x cubed minus x and the x-axis. So my first step, since I'm interested in looking at areas only, I have to be aware of when my function goes below the x-axis. We try to integrate something below the x-axis, we get negative areas, and then we'll get cancellation and we won't come near a correct answer. So our first step is to sketch the graph. First thing we can do is take a look at the behavior as we go to plus infinity or minus infinity. Since the leading term in my function is an x cubed, that means as we go to plus infinity, the y is going to go to plus infinity, so pointing up. So go out x equal to minus infinity, the y's are going to go to minus infinity, so pointing down. Next I look for zeros. So x cubed minus x factors nicely. We get the roots 0 and plus or minus 1. So I plot them on the graph over here as so on the x-axis. We're going to hit in three spots. Then I can look for increasing and decreasing. So what I'll do is I'll take the derivative. I'm going to have f prime equals 3x squared minus 1. I'll get critical points when that's equal to 0. And that's going to happen at x equal to plus or minus the square root of 3, which is plus minus 0.577, roughly. I plug those points into the original function, so that way I could put points in on the graph. So we're going to have the point roughly 0.577 down minus 0.38, which is right there. And then minus 0.577 goes to 0.38, so that point right there. So that's where the derivative is equal to zero, so we expect tangent lines to be horizontal. Now if I want increasing and decreasing, I have to put in one point from each region, and that will tell me the behavior on the entire region, where we break it up by the critical points. So I choose zero for my middle region, and we see that that's going to give me a minus one, so we'll be decreasing in that region. We put plus or minus 1 in, we get a 2, so it will be increasing on the outer regions, and now I can just connect the dots. Okay, We could go for concavity, that will give us a prettier graph, but all we really care about is where we're positive or negative. So when I connect the dots and consider the behavior at infinity, we get this function here, with this graph of this function. We note for the area, to get the boundary with the x-axis, that's going to be this region here and this region here. Now, first fundamental theorem of calculus is going to tell me if we're above the x-axis, I can get the area by taking an antiderivative, evaluating at the endpoints, and then take the difference. If it's below the x-axis, if I want the area, same recipe, but then I change the sign. Let's take a look. So for my first region, we're completely above the x-axis. So I just take the antiderivative, the rule, add 1, flip it over, gives me 1 fourth x to the fourth. And then add 1, there's a 1 here, so that becomes an x squared. Flip it over, it becomes a 1 half, and we pick up our minus sign from before. I'm going to evaluate at each point. So putting 0 in here gives me 0. Putting a minus 1 in here gives me, okay, there's our 0 from 0, and then minus the minus 1 fourth we get. When we put 1 into there, that gives me 1 fourth minus a half. Minus a minus gives me a plus, so I get 1 fourth here. I go to the second area. Same trick, we take the antiderivative. I'm going to put in 1 and 0 now. Here I'll have 1 fourth minus when I put in a 1, and then a 0 when I put in 0 into here. So this definite integral is going to give me minus 1 fourth. All of this is below the x-axis. So if I want the area of the region, I just drop the sign. So that area is going to be 1 fourth. If I want the area for the entire region, 
I'm just going to add the two, and that gives me one half for my final answer. Now, we note if we just got right to taking the antiderivatives for the definite integral, we'd have a problem if we didn't sketch first. If you note, taking the antiderivative of this, like we did before, and then going from minus one to one, well, you'll see that we get zero. That's what we would expect if we just took that definite integral because the piece above perfectly matches the piece below, so they'll cancel out, giving us a net area of zero.